Funding for painting journeys is provided by Veritas. Financial knowledge is power. Be empowered. God's beauty is all around us, and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello, and welcome to Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch, and we're going to journey across our canvas today. Um, but first of all, I want to talk to you about the painting that I uh, was doing on our last episode of Painting Journeys. And thank you for joining us. That's great, great that you tuned in. I hope you like it. Okay, here is what I was painting on our last show. This is springtime in the garden. As you can see, I've made a few changes. I, um, I changed my background a little bit from what it originally was. I think I had something a little more lavender in the background and less leaves. And, and, I, and I, uh, in my home studio, I punched up some of the colors and with a gold frame on it, um, I, I really like it. I think it, I think it looks like, like spring in the garden, right? So anyway, I had the occasion to go to um, Suamico, Wisconsin. Now that's, that's north of Green Bay, and uh, there's a zoo there. It's called the New Zoo, and they have quite a few animals. I was particularly taken with the giraffe. In fact, I think on our next show, that's what I'm going to paint is a portrait of the giraffe. But as I was leaving the zoo, and getting into my car across the street, I looked out beyond the parking lot, and here was this beautiful view. Well, I had my paints with me, and I thought, I'm just gonna do a monochromatic sketch, and then I'm going to finish it on painting journeys. And so, this is my monochromatic sketch, this is the photograph I took afterwards. I'm not in this exact same location, but that doesn't matter. The subject matter is still the same. But this is what I painted on site while I was right there. And I did it all in shades of, of brown and white. Uh, and this is called a monochromatic wash. I have all my subject matter in. Um, I, I don't have a lot of detail, but that's okay. So now, from my photograph, I'm going to paint color over this. I know where my darks are, and I know where my lights are, my water, and everything. So it's all right there for me, ready to go. So um, this is my palette. It's the same palette I usually use, uh, basic colors. Mm. I think I did add uh, today, for today's segment, I did add a little bit of this uh, cerulean blue. And um, you have two choices when you work with cerulean blue. We, they have a cerulean blue hue, of which is not as strong. The tinting power is not as strong. And, um, but this is true cerulean blue. So it has a very strong tinting power. Just to show you what I mean, I'm gonna take a little bit of it right here. I hope you can see that. And I'm gonna add a little white to it. There now. See how pretty that is? Really pretty. And it's a great start for our sky. So today we're in Suamico. Wisconsin, north of Green Bay. We're just outside of the new zoo, and we're in the parking lot, and we're going to, actually we're here in the studio, the station, but we're like in a, on a journey in my mind. So let me get back into this. Alrighty, let me mix, mix up a little more paint, and away we go. I 
It was kind of a cloudy day. Um, as you can see from the photograph, there was a lot of clouds back there. But I think I want it to be um, just have some of this real tr pretty true blue. I am going to put just a touch of green in it. I used just a touch of the viridian. Warm it up a little bit. I like a warm sky. It's springtime here in Wisconsin. And so as you can see, um, your evergreens are nice and green, um, but the rest of the uh, trees haven't quite leafed out. And the residue of what was left over from last year in this uh, patch of natural grasses here, it hasn't uh, greened up yet. Um, I would imagine uh, within the next few weeks, that's all going to change drastically. All righty, I see a little bit of this blue right in here. Oh boy, look at how pretty that looks when you just pop that right in there onto that brown. And I'll probably be eliminating things as I go. Um, I like to do that because, you know, you, you don't want to show everything. That's not necessary to show everything. As you know, I like to start in the back um, with the sky and come forward, sort of a layering effect that makes you feel like if you're painting like three-dimensionally, then it has a better chance, I feel, of, of appearing three-dimensional when you look at it in the, when the finished work is, you're looking at the finished painting. Oh, I'm liking the way this look, kind of, kind of a marbled look there, where the lights are in there mixing with the darks. That's very nice. I like that. So anyway, let me tell you about this giraffe. What a character. Well, actually, there was two of them, a male and a female. They were a pair. And um, they come right over, and they eat right out of your hand. It's the craziest thing. And they will, like, beg for food. There's, a, a like, a high... Um, place that you can walk up to kind of where you're at the, the same level as the giraffe's head and you can purchase food and and buy, uh, give them this, this food. When I was there, they were feeding them kale and vegetables, which is very good for their diet. So the fellow that was, that was the volunteer that day was telling me how the the female giraffe had already had two babies giraffes um, they're right there at the zoo and they didn't want her to have any more so they actually have her on birth control medicine so that she can be in there with her mate and there's no problems and I was kind of astounded by that I never thought about an animal being put on birth control. But it made sense because he said that all of the zoos in the um, country all have, you know, plenty. There's n enough giraffes to go around. And why, may, why, you know, let them have give birth to more than what are necessary? So I thought that was pretty nice. Now I'm going to echo this sky. Um, down here in my water. So anyway, um, the giraffes, you know how like some animals, when they come up to eat, they'll try to push each other out and crowd in and be first. Not these two. It was the way they wound their heads around. 
to be fed and they were all entwined, it was almost like um, it was almost <laughs> it was almost like one giraffe with two heads. You know, it was really it was really kind of wild looking. They were very very sweet, gentle. I love giraffes. And then a good friend of mine sent me a. a uh, video online about a hotel in Africa. Well, it's an inn in Africa, you know, resort, and where you can actually go and the giraffes stick their heads in the windows and dine with you. And I, I thought to myself, Gir a giraffe is my favorite animal. I love giraffes. They're always they're always sticking their heads out, and I love that. Anyway, so the, there's this there's this um, resort where you can actually uh, be sitting there having your lunch or your breakfast, and the giraffes are standing there, you know, with their heads through the window, begging. I think that's so cool. I would love to see that. I think I died and went to heaven if I could go there. Well, if I went there, we'd have to do a painting journey segment on it. That's for sure. So anyway, all right, getting a little bit of that. I want this a little bit darker down here. Getting a little bit of that in there. And you'll see how I handle the water a little later. You see how in the picture I've got all of this um, reflection into the water where I stood and, and as I did my, my mock up here, um, it didn't, it, um, I didn't see all that reflection. I must have taken this either earlier or afterwards because it looks, it does look a little different, but that's okay. We can work with that as we journey across this canvas. So there weren't too many, there weren't too many animals that were up and around, um, at the zoo the day I was there. Um, there's, you know, they have a, they have a goodly amount of, of animals, but it was a very hot, one of the very first really hot days we've had this spring, and most of them were asleep. All the big cats and everything. There's darling little groundhogs that all stood up and watched me, we had attention. They're so funny, those little critters. Okay, Let's see, I think I want a little bit right in here. Right there, okay. All right, now let's get some of this green in the background here. For these trees, these first, well, first of all, I want to put the, make the brown that is behind. It's a soft, all these soft branches that you see back there, that's very soft. So we're just going to suggest that, kind of suggest it like I had done when I did the um, monochromatic on site. Okay, mixing up a nice, soft, kind of a brown. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit with some of my sky. Hmm. Turn kind of green. Okay, what can we do to make it more brown? We'll put a little bit of blue in it. Okay, there we go. You have to pardon me while I talk myself my way through this. It's, it's a work in progress here to get sometimes to get the color that you want to show up. And then you never know until you put it on the canvas. When you put it on the canvas, sometimes it's too late. Then you have to take it off. Okay, we got a clean brush. That's not the right one. Let's use this one. Okay, now I just want to just go up in here. I'm going to blot this off. I want to go up in here. And I just want to suggest these other trees and things that are up in there, not anything that's real. I may put some, some um, 
trunks and heavier branches on them. But for right now, it's that, it's that, that look of, of, of trees that are in the distance that haven't leafed out yet. So they're not really green, but they're back there. You know, they're back there behind those, those f fir trees. Spring is such an exciting time in Wisconsin. The just, you know, just is it, so, the season um, is so beautiful as things start to bud and bloom. When I first moved here from California, I wasn't real crazy about spring. Um, fall was my favorite season because it was, it's the most colorful. You know, if you're just looking at just scenery outside. But now, now that I've been here for a few years and, well, more than a few, and gone through the winters and everything, I realize the importance of spring and how wonderful it feels for the, um, to see the new buds and the new growth and the, and the completion of the cycle, you know, the death and then the rebirth, um, the death during winter and then the rebirth in the springtime is so wonderful. I'm just gonna put just a few little trunks on these and a few little branches and so that we know that they're there not too much. Just trying to give the effect of something in the background a little bit here. And there we go. You need a small brush for this and just, you know, little, little quick narrow strokes that are very light. There we go. Now we have the the feeling that there's some trees back there. Okay. And they all are about the same height. I'm gonna bring this one up a little bit though because it's kind of redundant to have everything the same height in your painting. So we raise that one up and we'll put a little more stuff up here. You probably can barely see this, but it, it's not supposed to be very dark. It's supposed to look very far away. Now then, yes, okay, that is what I wanted. Now then, we're going to um, put the the green. Now the trees in the background um, are, um, they're lighter and golder. They have, you know, the yellow highlights on them. They're actually lighter than these over here that are closer to me. And I think that's because the sun is um, hitting um, probably right in this, this direction, what sun there is. Uh, this this is not a shadow. This is a window that they open up. I think in the in the summertime, that's not not a cast shadow there. So I have to take that into consideration, you know, and try to remember now where is my sun coming from? And I see this shadow here, and the reflection coming down here. So yes, I'm right. The sun is coming right like this. Okay, so the sun is hitting these big time. All right. So then. We need that to be, just to have a little bit of a brightness to it back there. Well, everything in the distance is going to be just a little lighter, a little bluer. Okay. Really glad you joined me today. This is, this is so such a wonderful treat to be able to share 
my little journeys with you. We'll put a little dark in there to give it a little more punch. And then there's a little one right in here. And he needs a little yellow on him. Okay, and then we have a, another one right here. Now you see what, by when I start putting these in, you can see why it was important to put those trees in the background in. It was so funny, I, I drove all the way up to the zoo. I thought I'd paint in the zoo. And I come out and I see th this little scene in the parking lot and I decide to paint that instead. Oh well. I think what, what captured my imagination was the covered bridge. You know, covered bridges in the United States are becoming a thing Oh, a, a, of a, from a bygone era, uh, there aren't many of them anymore that are in good shape, intact. And even though this one looks in very good shape, I don't know if it was refurbished or, you know, um, fixed up, if it was an old one or if it's a relatively new one. It's kind of hard to say, but I was still enchanted with it because it was a covered bridge. And I know that they're like the, going the way of the wooden barn. Soon there, they will not be. Um, you won't see any more of them. Okay. Oh, darn it, I don't want my trees to get too um, Christmas tree like so I've got to get a little messier here there get down in here with some darks And that one needs to be a little bit darker. As you can see, I'm not real, real careful to paint things exactly as in the photograph. You know, if I want it to look like a photograph, then I've got a gorgeous photograph right here. I'll just look at that. I want it to be my interpretation of it. And we do have a little baby tree right in here. He looks like he's a little darker. Okay. All right, there. Now, now that looks like we've got tree on top of tree. That's good. Okay, and then over here, we just to have its trees, and they're just sort of uh, 
we have to get those in and then we'll have to use our wipe out tool and wipe out where the this dead well I don't think it is dead I just don't think that it is that it is um, butted out yet but maybe it is dead I don't know but I thought it was kind of interesting so and this right over in here you can't see it on the photograph but it was really a little inlet of water and so the, these are the the um, reflections down into the water that that this cast of which was really kind of neat so all right let me see here so we are going to have whoops oh we don't want that red what are we doing with that So I want to paint, try to paint behind this a little bit. And, and right in here too. This is coming up right in here. And then we have another tree back here. Now I'll probably come in with this, this, the sky and poke some holes in this. Right now, I just want to um, get the idea that there's dark behind the light here. These dark trees are behind the light so that I can show the, um, the lightness of the um, broken looking stuff here in the foreground. Okay, a little more green. Bear with me, I know you're probably thinking, gee whiz, Kitty, that's taking you forever to get that. But this is all what we have to put in before we can, you know, start working with our stuff in the foreground. My camera girl today, his name is Lacey. And Lacey's going to let me know what time, uh, how much time I have left and keep me on task. So that's a good thing. All right. Okay. Little bit of dark in here and in here. All right, now that's looking pretty good. We'll make this more tree like later, maybe, and then maybe not. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so now then we've got some more of that brush like looking. Um, stuff right in here. And right over in here. Okay. And right along in there. And in there. Here. Here. And then let's see. We'll put our little building in. Let's see, it's kind of a gold. Hmm, let me see here. You know, I really, I really thought that this would be really very easy to 
come over this. That's not orange enough. And paint over the, over what I have here. I thought, oh, this is going to be a piece of cake. It's not. It's not. Everything always turns out to be a little more difficult than you think it's going to be. I think my door needs to be a little bit bigger here. I know it does, okay. So that's going to be some nice dark. Okay. It's going like that and then like this and then down. put a little light in there because we have to show that we can see in there. All right, let's get that roof on. Roof is kind of a brownish. You ever do that? You ever drive along and go someplace and you have a dense destination and you think that all you're going to find there is, is one thing and then you come across something that absolutely captivates you that you weren't expecting? That's the way I felt when I saw this scene. I just thought, oh. This is just beautiful. I want to paint this. I want to share it with you, my viewers. And I do hope you're enjoying today's show. Suamico. Isn't that an unusual name? So many of the names in Wisconsin are from uh, the Indians. Different tribes of Indians named the different towns are named after them. I think that's really interesting. Just like in California where I'm from, so many of the missions are named after the missionaries. All right. A little light on there. Now we have to get in here and get a little dark and and make a little shadow right under here. Have to be careful here. There we go. There. Okay, now we'll soften this edge right in here. A little bit because we don't want anything to be too um, too hard. We don't want the hard edges. I like things that are nice and soft and more painterly looking. And this is coming down right here and it's going across. Whoops. Boy, my hand church can't stand draw a straight line. I have people all the time come up to me when I'm painting in public and say, oh my goodness, I couldn't draw a straight line. Well, you know what? I can't either. <laughs> I can't. And I can't paint a straight line either. But there's always a second chance where you get to go back over it and try to fix it. That's the wonderful thing about painting with oil paints. You can fix them. They're fixable. Okay, let's see here now, this dark little window thing right in here. There we go. 
and I think it could be just a little darker right there. It's usually when I when I say okay and I think, and then I go back in, that's when I goof up. But does it stop me? No. Okay, there's our covered bridge. That's good enough for now. Maybe we'll put a little highlight on it. Right down in here. Okay, now this is dark. Uh, underneath it there, so I have to get that dark again and go right under there with it. And the water is actually going underneath this, so it's really quite dark as it's coming down right in here because the water is going under there. And then we have some slate. Right, right back here, like a rock. It's right in there. And we've got kind of a golden brown. Um, well, let's see. There, that's better. Talking to myself, aren't I? Mm-hmm, I know. Working hard, working fast. I want this to be just so for you. Okay, and then this is coming around over here. Okay, and back in there. Alrighty, now then, uh, darker, right in here. And it's darker right down where it touches the water, right back in here, very dark. and right in here. And we just kind of bring that up a little bit to kind of make that look like um, the water line. Okay, now we'll go back to our the bright orange of our shed as it reflects into the, uh, of our covered bridge as it reflects into the water. And so that's going to be right in here. It's not going to be quite as bright, but it's going to be coming down right there. And then we have the dark right in here. Right, and then this water over here is a very dark, it looks like it's a very dark green. I better add some blue to it. Okay, a little blue on top, no, orange. We've got that reflection of the, of the um, grass is coming down in here. Okay, and then here, 
we have the reflection of the trees coming down into the water. And it's going to come down just a little bit more into, whoops, need a darker green kitty. There we go. It's going to come down into here. Okay, now then, we're going to take a clean brush and we're going to move our water to make it look like water. That back and forth stroke gives us the feeling of, 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 the, of the water. And the light on the water. Okay, right in here, I believe we need a little, um, Bit of the watercolor, and it's probably a little. Let's see here. Let's make the water just a little bit bluer right in here as it's coming in underneath there. Yeah, a little gold on that. There we go. Okay, all right. Now, um, this right here is a little piece of land that's coming out. And it's kind of a violet um, color, so we'll get that in there. It's a little lighter than that. Okay. All righty. And then... Let me see here. Boy, the time is really, really just racing by. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Where do we want to go next? Well, let's just do this. Let's just get these guys in here and so we can at least see that part of it. If we don't get this done today, we may have to make this a two-part show. And there's nothing wrong with that. You'll, you'll tune back in, I'm sure, to watch me finish. Okay. Alrighty, let's see. And this is, we're just going to let this come right here, like that. And this is coming up here. We've got one going up there. And it's coming down here. Now you can't see that because I'm over here more on this side to the left of the uh, photograph. When I was painting this, I, there were some pretty good sized trees right in here that I put on my um, value study for you so you can't see it but I do know that they were there so I'm going to put them in and there was one right in here and he was kind of crooked everything seems to be kind of like 
gnarly and and crooked um, back in there. Now, and this, of course, has got a lot more of these little um, things sticking off of it that need to be put on. Okay. Now we're going to try to get the some of the um, grassiness in there, and that's really quite light. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's back there. This is back here. Oh, that's too light, kitty. Too light. Let's see here. Let's try this instead. There, that that's a little better. We've got a lot of stuff that's growing up, and this is all back in here, and it's growing up. And then we have some dark coming, the dark water coming right in here. When I was there, there was this lovely little family of ducks sitting right on this area right here. In fact, you can see them still in the water here. And they, anyway, they were sitting right there on this little um, area that's kind of like a little beach-like area that was jutting out. Okay, now we've got lots of of the yellow down in here. Would really be nice if I could get the, the, oh, I didn't do this water here. Okay, that water is quite dark. Um, let me get a bigger brush here. Yeah, that water was quite dark in here, especially right under here. Lacey just told me that I have 10 minutes. I really don't know where the time has gone today because I certainly have not been wasting any time. I've been working full out, and yet the time has totally gotten away from me. But then we'll just finish it and bring it back, and you can see it at the beginning of our next episode, I will have the completed covered bridge in Suamico to show you and on our next episode. I don't think I'm going to have to do a two-part show on this one. It seems to be close enough that you can kind of see where where things are going here. This is supposed to be the reflections in the water. Let's get some dark in here, right in there, and there. A little dark over, over in here on this side, and in here. There, that gives it a little more uh, definition. I always like that definition there. Okay, yeah, there we go. And we'll clean that up later. Okay, now we'll take this 
and we'll make the water just ever so lightly. We have to just kind of like suggest that the water's kind of moving so that it doesn't look so. Okay, let's see here. Well, we didn't do this right here. I know that it's really getting close. But by golly, I'm going to get this covered if it kills me here. There's our road. Okay, now then we have the grasses. <laughs> okay. And more grasses, more green in the grasses. Some reds. And then some oranges. Have you ever seen anybody paint on television when the camera has been um, speeded up and you think, oh my God, there's no way they can paint that fast. Well, that's me. I'm, I've got the speeded up brush right now. Okay. So I think I'm just going to finish it up with a little bit of this blue and green water right in here. And because I know I am running out of time. So I can always put those reflections in there later, but I just want to give you an idea of what that's going to look like. We have a little bit of a thing coming here. Okay, a little sandy business coming there. And, okay, I just got the five minute signal. This is like a race. Who's gonna win, me or the clock? Hmm. Well, I think we're coming along pretty good here, though. I think we're gonna be okay. Um, I think we just need a little, a little definition here for our our sand And then we'll go ahead and put in a couple of those. Okay. 
And I think I want some real, real bright blue right up here in the foreground. Nice clean blue right in here. there whoops see one touch too many kitty go back to your dark and make that darker right there little light highlight the little roof just a tad right there and as I said, we were in Suwamako. That's north of Green Bay, right outside of the new zoo. And next, our next show, I'm going to do a portrait of that gorgeous male giraffe that I saw at the zoo that day because he was really something. And I want to share him with you. And so I think we're getting really close to the end here. A um, little light right there. Oops, a little too much. Okay, well, you know what? We have to be done for today. But I really and truly hope that you've enjoyed the show and that um, this very, very fast rendition or journey across the canvas has uh, made you feel good. So once again, this is Kitty Lynn Klish. The name of the show is Painting Journeys, and thank you for being with me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. Funding for Painting Journeys is provided by Veritas. Financial knowledge is power. Be empowered.